Hello, this is Haku to be in, and today we're going to be reading some RPG horror stories. This subreddit is uh, similar to D&D horror stories, except it covers more than just D&D. It covers uh, any RPG that you can play with other people. This includes tabletop RPGs as well as live action and role playing, aka LARPing. While it is very well known that a lot of people can view LARPing in a very negative way, I'm not here to pass judgment on that. I remember I did this all the time without even knowing what it was called when I was younger. And if someone finds enjoyment in doing it, it, it as an adult, that's all the power to them. I didn't really pick any stories with it in it, so there's no reason for me to even be mentioning it. At least, I don't think so. I already forgot what I picked. Let's review by I read it for the channel. Let's get right into this. <laughs> d d player kills my pet lizard. Honestly, reading this title again, I am really scared because I'm like wondering, do you mean in the game or in real life? Like RPG horror stories have things where they actually cross over from game to real life a lot more often. I think. Why is there a banana? Oh, it's right recap. Who cares about that? I was playing D&D as a DM with a group of people I thought were friends. Okay, they killed your lizard in real life. I hope you never talk to or approach them in any capacity ever again after this. Because that's kind of messed up. Of people I thought were friends. Most still are. One of these players legitimately fills me with the rage and sadness that even to this day I can't even describe. One of the players was your typical self centered Mary Sue who wanted the whole campaign to be about him. He loved this character, Orc Druid. He wrote a five-page backstory and demand that we all read it, and he would unironically tell me things like, This campaign is boring. Imagine if we decided to make the campaign about Orc Druid's rich backstory. It literally involves a lich. All we are doing right now is looking for some hobgoblin of like a war chief. So you can imagine when his precious orc died along with another party member who wasn't a total psycho man baby, after prematurely trying to confront the Hob Goblin War Chief's mummy, despite the party warning him that this was not a normal mummy, he said he didn't care he and he just wanted to get this over with. He threw the typical tantrum when the mummy killed him, accusing him of having a DM versus party mentality. Said I'm a bad DM, etc. Then he started getting more belligerent and threatening to kick my ass and es escalating to death and rope threats. So my husband obviously started hearing this meltdown and came out and in no uncertain terms told him to leave the house before he, before he regrets it. Orc's player then just looks uh, looked like he was ready to fight him until my husband just gave him the if a grand fine outlook. So he backed down and stormed out. But not before passing my Tegu's tank. He was I don't know if I said that right. I I'm, I'm too much anime at this point. I don't know how to pronounce words except for or, or just by assuming that it's like anime a words. <clears throat> I 
He was a baby, so he still lived in a tank that my husband but my husband was in the process of basically turning our backyard into an enclosure for him when, for, or when he b got bigger. I love that little lizard and spent hours with him every day. If you have never er, dealt with a tegu, you might not understand, but they are just was about the most doggo like reptiles out there, and this still pains me to this day. But that bass, as he was leaving, violently shoved the tank to the ground, and as my lizard tried to run, he stepped on him. I broke down immediately in hysteria. I could not stop crying as my husband just finally grabbed this piece of crap and tossed him out of the house as the rest of the party helped him. And all I could do is hold my dead low friend and cry. We called the police, but they basically told us to go to small claims and or get a restraining order. Our police department is kind of crappy where we live in general, so this unfortunately was not a surprise. That is animal cruelty. That is not okay of this as, as, as low oh, oh, piece of crap. What the hell? I live in a place where if you even and mentioned it and and doing this sort of thing to someone's animal, you would be in hell of, of trouble. You'd be in a lot of trouble. Let's just say that. I think you'd probably get arrested. Like even just like abandoning an animal will, will get into the trouble. So I don't know how the uh, hell this person could just get away with with straight up murdering a baby lizard. I felt like a sick joke to me to put a price on that little lizard instead of a small claims court. Plus, he was a rescue, so I didn't buy him. I know maybe it seems silly, but this event really just destroyed me. That campaign abruptly ended, and I haven't played D&D or any TTRPG since. I doubt I ever will again. In the rage I feel for that low life who would kill a defenseless as animal over a fucking D&D game is overwhelming. I honestly wish death upon him. I know I shouldn't, but it's just how I feel. I'm gonna tell you right now, don't wish death upon on people who are not worth going to jail for. TLDR! Scumbag gets angry that a stupid character dies in D&D, &D, gets belligerent, and kills my real life baby, the lizard. Absolutely disgusting. Oh, what's this? I'm just gonna ignore that. <sighs> Ow! Can you like not snooze tabs? That actually hurts my eyes. Alright. <sighs> the tale of the girls who tried to put Toho characters into VTM. I don't know what VTM is. I might have to look it up later. But we're just gonna ignore it for now. This is a second hand story got from one of my friends. Oh, then make them post it, not you. Who told me that of that time she invited two girls into her VTM campaign who came with these abysmal characters. Emiliana. A Trimer elder with purple hair who acts all cool and pretends to be able to manipulate destiny when in reality, she just has normal vampire stuff. Lilith, Emiliana is the younger sister who has embraced a bit, who was embraced a bit later by someone else. Her best friend, so she's a Malcava Malcavian. She likes to blow stuff up and carries a tie bear everywhere. And understand the, the strange spelling, also Fishmalk. What? <clears throat> also, Emiliana apparently had a ghoul who wears a maid outfit and follows her around everywhere and has a bunch of knives and stuff in of her bra. Those are obviously very obviously poor research attempts at putting Amelia and Flandre Scarlet into VTM. I mean, you can put other or, or, or characters into your RPG games if you want. But like... At least be honest about what you're doing. 
I mean, a lot of people, when they a, a play D and D, like to play as their favorite characters. Like maybe half the fun for you is playing as your own character, but sometimes I like to play as the characters that I already know, or just make a basically a carbon copy of a character and just put it in a different class. Kind of like like what Fate already does to um, Kukulain, aka Lancer from Stay Night, even though I got him as a caster in Grand Order when I when I played that game. <clears throat> Got a bunch of mini horror stories from D&D 5e I wanted to share. Oh yeah, by the way, these story subreddits with like RPG horror stories and D&D horror stories, I make a... sort of um, exception to the no NSFW rule. I love reading these, and I uh, had some stories to share, but I didn't want to uh, bore everyone with meaningless details. I like to share my favorite horror stories I've encountered. Most of these are from 2020 to 2021, and are from playing online. Oh, did you got some really depraved stories? <laughs> One. One game I played was hosted by the CM, who you could tell really didn't care who played. I think he was testing out his campaign. We had a player in this campaign that who clearly had made character syndrome. The starting plot hook was we were all getting on a cart to go to war or something, and he refused to get on. Then makes him get on. The guy had, had some crazy build that started with a bag of holding and he had the lucky feet. I'd reject this character outright. You aren't starting out overpowered. Come on. Later in the session, Took him an extra uh, hour, whereas he wants to steal from some NPCs. He kills two main NPCs crucial to the story, steals all of their gold, and tries to hide the bag by shoving up his character or uh, his vagina. The guy was super weird, and I left the campaign after that. The kicker is the DM made him roll to do that. Man, at least he made him roll, but honestly, I'd probably just feel like, no, you aren't doing that. We're supposed to be decent people here. Stop killing people. Stop killing everyone. Two. Play another campaign where this one guy bases character off of some animated show on YouTube. He forced all of us to watch a show. The show was Hasman Hotel. Actually, a good show. It didn't ever finish or continue, and it's probably going to next year though. Which does make me excited for the for our, our next year. It's basically a show about devils and hell or something. He based his character off of the Red Devil guy. Oh, Alistair. With the radio. He played a warlock and made the whole, whole game about him, basically. I played with his friends who were actually funny. When I asked why he loves his character so much, one of them said, I don't know, he's just like that. Now, that's when Hotel Man really wanted the party to be bigger, so he kept inspiring his friends who were all from different time zones, which caused games to never happen. He invited his ex-girlfriend who barely showed up, and when she did, she tried to bang off the NPCs. DM was a good guy who didn't, who definitely didn't deserve this. I mean, yeah, what the heck? If you're gonna invite people, make sure that, that they do have time to actually join your game, and don't invite everyone on you know. That's going to make combat go from maybe 15 minutes to about 3 hours. And I already think that combat in D&D is already exhaustingly long as it is. Three, I played a campaign where uh, it was this weird Feywild place. I played a half arc barbarian and all I wanted to do was kill stuff. DM left to roleplay and considered himself a really good writer, which was far from the case. Campaign was super, super railroaded, with NBC showing up out of nowhere and always interrupting party conversations. 
NPCs were high leveled and never let, really, let us really do anything. All of us were trapped in some weird magical barrier city because the outside world was super racist. He forced us to like the city and its people basically. DM never did combat so we could never level up. He kept throwing in my backstory in my face, I was looking for my family, and never actually let me pursue it. Instead of throwing ma- as a Massive what? You didn't finish your sentence. <laughs> DM was also a closet gay man. He used to talk about how being gay was unnatural and a mental illness. Despite also identifying as gay. He had a relationship with one of our other players. I felt bad because he clearly did have some sort of mental illness. Yeah, um... Are you saying that he had a mental illness because he was gay, or are you saying that he actually had a mental illness? Because being gay isn't a mental, is not a mental illness. It's just who you are. Just like being straight is not a mental illness. When I was playing this game, I was 17 years old. Now, I don't really care about this too much, but it does make it juicier. He used to hit on me occasionally. One time I said, oh, but I'm 17. So people respond with, I don't care. <laughs> it's legal where I am. It probably isn't. You're probably reading the law wrong. I left that campaign like two hours after he said that. Yeah, I'm quite sure he, he, he actually read the law wrong, where or like has those Romeo and Juliet laws where like if Let's say you and your significant other were dating at like 15 and 16 and then one of you grows up to be 18 and the other one is still technically like 17. You aren't going to get arrested for that because you're still in a relationship. It's one of those sorts of laws. It's not quite the same as initiating a relationship with someone who is under a certain age while living in a different, while living in a certain place. Another way, it has it. It has an age range limit of four years. I've seen those laws, and those laws, us have been. I've had people try to use those laws to try and get in into relationships with younger people, and it's not okay. This one is a real weird one, and it was my first D and D game. First game I ever played was Icewind Dale, Room of the Frost Maiden. I was some boring monk character as it was my first time. DM had a DMPC called Valgraven, who was like this massive edgelord who didn't trust a party. One other player who was a friend who was friends with the DM before this and had played with him before was playing two different characters at the same time. That's one. That's just party e e padding at that point, and two. That seems like a lot of work. She was switch between in the two characters, and they were the exact same person. Also, she met gamed a lot with these characters. Turns out, the DM was, uh, was his massive Twitter role player who was also a writer. He was very much addicted to pornography as his Twitter uh, was just filled with it. A lot of furry stuff and clearly fetish stuff. Think probably cynical, oh, but one and a half times worse. Imagine still using Twitter. He had a weird relationship with another person in the group who joined later. He called this girl his adopted daughter, and told us how her family life was horrendous. Not his story to tell. He told us how he wanted to go see her and help her out, despite still living with his parents with no car and no job. <sighs> Towards the end, I actually spoke to the girl. I was probably the only one closest to her age at that group. She was around 16, I think. Holy crap. Uh, 
<sighs> I told her to stay away from the DM and that things will all get better. After that, I left the group. My takeaway from all of these stories, D&D is a time-consuming game. If you're not having fun and it won't get better, then don't waste your time. You're better off finding a new group than trying to make your old group work. And be careful of weirdos on the internet. Thanks for reading. Of course. <sighs> now I have to wait for this to load and wonder. Actually, why is it taking so long? Who knows? Anyway. Seriously, this discussion and should have been had should have been two minutes. Why are we still talking about it an hour later? Hi everyone, I'm new to actually visiting this subreddit, so forgive me if I goof anything up. I think, I think I've been on both this and the indie horror stories. It's just where you get RPG horror stories like this. I've seen lots of videos on YouTube featuring horror stories from here and thought I'd let y'all hear the tales of a group I once played with for a period of about four months. Good to know about that at OP. I'm quite sure it wasn't me, but it might be some someone um, that I, I also listen to. The People DM, a genuinely sweet guy who I think deserved much better from, from his players. And I wish I could have stayed in his campaign, but outside forces made me have to quit. Me, a half a, a half elven fighter who thinks she's not worried to be the paladin she wants to be. Also, me, my autistic, I don't know what she is because it's relevant later, boyfriend. A scatterbrain and centaur barbarian lesbian, barbarian lesbian with a flair for the dramatic and a favorite prostitute barbarian. This is formatted a little bit funny. I think they messed up a little bit. A human cleric, Eric, who was a raging alcoholic and a prop player for many reasons. Cleric, a tobacco rogue who relentlessly complained about everyone all the time. I have personal will be with for reasons. Rogue, and Mr. Main character himself, a warforged wizard. With massive ego problems. That guy. So for these se uh, several sessions leading up to uh, into the session where that guy was thankfully kicked from the group, tensions were elevated. Let's say Rogue would whine about everyone's issues both publicly and in private to the DM. Cleric was routinely putting the group in danger to see what happens. So the point where my character had to at times physically restrain him to keep him from intentionally setting off obvious traps. Wizard always a man we go with his plans because he was the smartest, even when the DM says outright that his plan will fail without won't well without fail, get at least one party member killed. And my boyfriend just trying to have a good time, but often clashing with the other toxic party members because he liked to stay in character rather than always do the optimal thing. I obviously was completely innocent of any wrongdoing and and ha and no one had any issues with the way I played the game. That's clear that's clear sarcasm. Wow, I freaking read that wrong. Okay, I say sarcasm, but after I left the DM and told me that no one even complained about me. A fact I'm proud of because Rogue Larry complained about everyone else constantly. That said, I'm sure the DM was just being nice. I know I can be hard to deal with sometimes. I've been a prom player before. I try, I, I do, and I try to own up to that. I'm far from perfect. So these sessions, slash I that broke the camel's back. We were trapped on a hostile, frigid archipelago, I needed to go from one island to the other. The problem was, we had no boat, and the water was far too cold to swim across and live. <clears throat> If 
Fortunately, Barbarian had an item that let her shape water or in a large enough radius that we could walk along the ocean floor as she shaped water around us to keep us safe in an air bubble. We were all set to go with this plan when uh, that guy spoke up. I could practically hear Rogue try typing message to the DM. That guy, being more fortunate, not needing air, said he could just walk under the water surface to the other island and bring the boat that we could see in the distance back to us. The DM pointed out that the coldness of the water would freeze him to death before he got there. Obviously trying to say, you guys already have plan, and your, and your plan will kill you. Don't do this. That guy proceeded to argue for, I shit you not, a full hour that his plan would work. Saying that as a Warforged, he should be immune to cold damage, despite that being nowhere in the rules. He kept arguing with the DM on this point, and for some reason also kept bringing up how he didn't need air, so you'd be fine. I think his intelligence was a, was a measure lower than his character's. Iberian got very heated in the argument, pointing out how oh, mind-numbingly stupid that plan was, in no kind terms. And I, much more politely, agreed in pointing out that our first plan got everyone, including that guy to the other island, all safe and sound, without even expending any resources. Eventually, we had no choice but to ignore that guy and proceeded across the bottom of the ocean, dragging him along. His character and cleric got kicked after that session, though I don't, I of course don't know the details of the conversations. The characters were ripped into pieces as an introduction to the boss we'd be facing. And to replace his end players joined the fray. Unfortunately, Barbarian was only welcome in that group for a few more sessions because people, I heavily suspect that this was Night and Rogue's doing as he complained about him more than anyone else, kept complaining about his abrasiveness and tendency to, you know, actually play his character the way she was risen. I left in solidarity with my boyfriend right in the middle of a raid on the cult controlling the archipelago. My character was smack dab in the middle of a personal crisis too. I really wish I could have played it out. Anyway, that's my story. As I understand it from the two or three conversations I've had with the DM since leaving in the, his game, the game has become, uh, has basically become a, a revolving door of players with the only constant being rogue. That guy was toxic to levels I can't even fathom, and I wish the UN had made decisions to kick him out inside my boyfriend, but maybe I'm biased. Eh. <sighs> and now for the last. And I think short story here, we have Party Ranch. <laughs> what Con convoluted plots to avoid and an an encounters? I want to sneak into the camp and glue their weapons to the ground. That sounds really fun, actually. Two pouts and gets other party members killed or outright kills them. It's all roleplay. Okay, that's very toxic. Three uses conflicting backstories. Evil party of orcs. I'm going to play a lawful good human wizard. Okay. Or it seems to find dry eye and ruining plot outlines and messing up quests. Talking about the King's espionage plot in the audience chamber. What did they do? <sighs> Alright. 
That's it for RPG Horror Stories. Which is totally different from D&D Horror Stories. Probably. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Oh yeah, by the way, I've got to mention this. It's been over a year since I actually started in making these silly little videos. And I have over a hundred subscribers now. Thanks for or are you subscribing to my I channel? It really it makes it, 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 it a lot more fun to see other people enjoying my content. Anyway, back to the outro as usual. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. So until then, goodbye!